On the Build Show today, we're going to take a look back at 2019 and review the best of. What were the interesting things? What did I learn? What were the cool products? What were the cool trips? What were the highlights of the year for me? You know, one of my favorite things about being a builder is that even after 25 years of being a professional builder, I still learn new things every year. And if, when I look back at 2019, gosh, I learned a ton this year and I really saw some interesting job sites and got to review some interesting products. So let's first start in January of 2019 when I got to take a trip to both Switzerland and Germany. Now let's take a look at this video. This is a video outside of a Swiss building manufacturer's job site or manufacturing plant, I should say. And they were building their office right next door to the plant. And their office was being built with the same methods they build their houses. Take a quick look at this. Coming to you from Switzerland, and we're visiting the Kung Holtzbau factory. Kung Holtzbau. That's what I said. And check this out, all wrapped up like a Christmas. Hey! <laughs> uh, it's funny that I can still crack myself up, isn't it? All right, let me scrub a little bit forward. But basically, this big Christmas present here that was all wrapped up on the inside revealed a building that was absolutely gorgeous. Check this out. Is this not one of the prettiest buildings you've ever seen? We're in that building that I showed on the outside just a second ago. This is the future office of Kung Holtzbau, that builder that built those beautiful wood structures, and that's what this is. All right, so check this out. I'm going to pause right here. This company in Switzerland is really intent on using all Swiss-made products and as much as possible having locally sourced things. So, and health was a huge concern for them as well, so much so that they said, look, we don't want to build out of anything but wood. And these buildings were built with solid wood, kind of like an old school American log cabin, but even thicker wood than that. So what you're seeing here is a wall section that was approximately eight inches thick that was built in one inch thick layers of kind of like horizontal shiplap where they actually used a wooden nail gun and nailed those sections together at a 45 and they kept changing the angles so that when you were done you had an eight inch wall section of solid wood. Now wood you would think is not a great insulator and that's correct when you think of a, a two by four stud the wood is somewhere around R1 per inch but when you put enough of that together you're actually getting a decent R value and this building that we saw had that going on with it. Right here, this is an all wood structure with a beautiful concrete core to serve as a staircase and a little bit of a mechanical core, but everything else is solid wood, so pretty. Architecture by Seiler Linhart. And look at these finished walls. This inside wall you're seeing here, this is a fully sanded finished wall. They're so in other words, that wall that you're seeing in the video there, that's an eight inch thick interior wall, but it also has an eight inch thick exterior wall. So in effect, a 16 inch thick solid wood wall. It was beautiful. And the crazy thing was a lot of the floor systems on those Swiss buildings as well were solid wood. They basically would sister together and make a kind of like a, a glue lamb out of horizontal, pardon me, out of vertical two by material. And so that floor that I'm walking on right there, that was two by eights they were wooden doweled together and sandwiched together such that you had a solid floor. Now above that, let's see if we can uh, show you what the crosshatch look like. Done here. I'm not sure if they're going to put... I'm going to scrub forward. Now this crosshatch that I'm standing on, what they would do is they would make um, uh, intersection of 90 degree angles of this so that you can kind of see there's some voids in there. And ultimately, they would come in and fill that with sand, and then they would nail a hardwood floor on top of that. And there was radiant uh, tubing in that floor as well, so that you'd have a warm floor, a floor that was solid wood and filled with sand with some serious mass. So you wouldn't hear anything in the floors below, and you'd have this beautiful warm heat while well, you're in this office building when it's finished, coming from the floor and the ceiling above, because both those planes would be warmed. I was totally blown away by Swiss, by Switzerland and the Swiss construction there. The houses were built similarly as well that I saw, although this particular factory, it's really building for a very, very small percentage of Swiss people. I think they built a couple hundred houses a year is all that were coming out of this factory. 
the vast majority of Swiss buildings were built in more traditional American style uh, framing where you have some type of two by member or maybe more timber framing where they had both cavity insulation and they had exterior insulation as well. Now fast forward from that trip in this next video I got a chance to go to Germany for a couple days and attend the Bau Show. Now I'd never actually heard of the Bau Show prior to this but apparently this is like the international building show uh, that we have in Las Vegas that I'm going to next month here in the United States, but on a world scale. So you would have people from Asia, from Europe, all over the place descending upon Munich, and it only happens twice uh, or once every other year, I should say. And incredible manufacturers from all over the place, really all over the world, were displaying their products and their systems. Now this is kind of an interesting display. This was the SEGA display, and SEGA was kind of the sponsor for this trip. And this display is pretty interesting because it shows how a lot of houses throughout Europe seem to be built in a um, traditional wood frame type construction. So let's look at this real fast. Other detail we see all the time in Europe is this plywood on the inside or OSB on the inside. Now I built a Benson wood house a couple years ago and Ted Benson has adopted that for his houses. I think that's a great detail. I wonder if we'll start seeing more of that in the state. Okay, so what you're seeing there is traditional framing inside of that OSB. And then on the inside, they would use the shear wall on the inside of the house. That's where that, that uh, OSB is that I'm touching in that photo. And then you use SEGA tapes to tape all that together for an airtight layer. And then for a vapor barrier, any, anywhere else, especially um, ceiling lines, they would use a SEGA membrane, which was a vapor barrier, and tape that for both airtightness and for vapor control. Remember, this is a cold climate. So we don't want moisture to accumulate on the backside of something cold because of the cold outside. And then on the outside of their buildings, they were adding all kinds of thick, thick insulation. Now all over Europe, I saw something I'd never seen before. And, and you'll see it if you watch, if you watch some of these videos, they used wood fiberboard insulation. I'd never seen this before. We use rock wool, uh, mostly in North America, but over there they seem to use a lot of this wood fiber insulation very very wood intensive countries okay so from there a few months later this is actually august when i published this video i got a chance to tour the benson wood factory now i built a house with these guys a couple years ago an incredible credible house that i got to build with them but benson wood which is based out of walpole new hampshire builds a very european style house so if you're interested in the same type of performance that you might see on a more traditional house built in Switzerland or Germany, but you want to build that in the States, this is a really interesting way to do it because these guys are doing it in a factory with systems that are proven. And here's a wall section right here. Let's take a quick look at this video. Okay, so let's look at this. This wall right here, you can see this probably is, I don't know, 30 feet long or so. Eventually, this will get shrink wrapped on the inside. And this is the end of the line. This is the window station. So what you're looking at here is the interior wall section. They frame it with two by threes, and when this gets completed in frame. All right, so I don't want to go through the whole video, but basically what's happening is you've got a very thick wall on the outside that's pre-insulated from the factory. You've got exterior insulation outboard of that, and then inside you've got this two by three service cavity that may or may not get insulated with rock wool bats. But when you're all said and done, you've got these wall sections that are anywhere from maybe as thin as 10 inches to maybe as much as 18 or 20 inches thick. Tons of insulation, a really smart way to do it, incredibly airtight, and we're typically, they're typically using European style windows as well, tilt turns that are very, very airtight. Okay, so that's uh, Europe. Let's fast forward to America now. I got a chance to uh, travel uh, twice to the kind of New England area, and this is a house that still sticks in my mind to this day. Um, because I think the detailing on this house is really one of the most beautifully detailed houses I've ever seen in my 25 year building career. Let's take a quick look at this house. I S D Twombly Architects and built by my friend Wade at WKP Construction is an absolute masterpiece of modern architecture. It really is. Let me fast forward. I'm just going to show you one or two details on this house. Let's see if I can get to this post. Here you go. This is a detail that I, I've thought about. Uh, actually using on my project coming up. I really like this detail. 
that the builder fabbed, had it galvanized. This is gonna keep the post off the ground so any water in this porch is not gonna be sucked up by the end grain. It's galvanized so it's not gonna rust. They did the same detail at the top of this post. And then look at that awesome I-beam supporting. The porch details were just unbelievable on this house. It was really just a uh, arbor on the outside but the detailing was incredible. And if I can fast forward here a little bit on the video, I wanna show you, here we go. Check out the flashing details that were happening around that too. You've got this beautiful, uh, what do they call that? Okay. When, when there's a, uh, a slice of steel kind of holding that wood on. I can't remember the uh, architectural term for that, but basically you're seeing that's bolted onto the outside of the house. And then just below that here, check out these flashings. All the flashings in the house were lead coated copper, so they wouldn't interact at all with the cedar, which was basically left to gray out naturally. If you haven't seen this video, you need to go back and see it. And ultimately, uh, it wasn't too far after I shot this video um, that I really, or really this is one of the first videos, honestly, that I got to know my friend Wade at WKP. And then as you know, later on this year, he joined me on the buildshownetwork.com. But on that same trip, I got to meet uh, a childhood legend. Uh, I got to go to the This Old House job site that was being built by Sweener Builders and meet the incredible builder, Jeff Sweener. I got to spend a little bit of time with Kevin O'Connor and... Coming season, and I'm here with the builder, Jeff Sweener. Right Jeff, good to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Jeff, you're the owner of Sweener Builders, yep. and I got to see you and your crew in action on the job site today. I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm a total fanboy of this old house. <laughs> it was really fun to see Tom. I actually met him once or twice before, but to get, get to spend a couple of minutes on his job site and meet him on framing day, it was really a childhood dream coming true. When I grew up, Tom was the only builder I knew as a 12 year old as I was watching this old house and thinking about what it could be like to be a builder someday. So to be on that job site, to meet Tom, and to get to spend some time with Jeff and his incredible crew, what a company. That season that was being filmed then, this was actually back in April of this year, is now on TV right now. So tune into this current season of this old house to kind of catch up. And oh, by the way, I gave out some build show hats when I was there, and it's been fun to watch the show and see several of the guys wear their build logo hats uh, since then. Okay, so then fast forward a month or two, and I made a trip out to Marfa, Texas, to see another gorgeous building, really, again, a modern masterpiece. I'm probably overusing that term, but check out this house. This is a job site doing a type of construction you've probably never seen before called rammed earth. We're gonna take a full tour. They're actually doing some of it right now, so this is a really cool job site tour. Let's get going. Oh man, look at that building. Hi, Brent. All right, I, want to, I don't want to spend too much time reviewing this video. If you haven't seen it, go check this one out. But this gorgeous building is being built out in West Texas in Marfa. My brother-in-law flew me out there, and the builder is a friend of mine, Branson Fustis, with Pilgrim Builders and Enabler. And his guys were just absolutely nailing the details. Just a beautiful building. You should definitely check this out. I'd never really seen a rammed earth house in person before. And to get to tour it and see how they're actually building those walls and actually literally ramming the earth together to form structural walls, what an incredible trip. Stay tuned in 2020, we've actually got an offer on the table to uh, go back and see the nearly completed house. So I'm hoping that we'll get a chance to fly back out there. But here's a little behind the scenes story. When this video published, uh, about a week or so later, Branson called me and said, hey Matt, check it out. My guys were out there on Saturday. This was like a week after the video published. And a Border Patrol helicopter touched down on site. If you see this video right here, see those trucks are parked? The Border Patrol helicopter basically touched down right by those trucks. And the guys walk over like, what's going on? Why is Border Patrol here? And the Border Patrol guy goes, no way, I thought this was it. I saw this house on the build show last weekend and I was flying over and figured this must be it. I'm so excited. And these guys gave him a tour. How crazy is that? A little behind the scenes from the build show 2019. Okay, let's move on. Next video. This was an interesting video. Uh, I honestly didn't quite know what I was getting into. Someone introduced me to this product at IBS last year. They weren't a... a um, uh, they, weren't a, uh, they weren't on display, but someone handed me a sample and said, this is pretty cool. 
I got a hold of the guys and I said, hey, would you pay to fly me out to see a house under construction? I think this is pretty interesting. And we shot this video. I'll give you the quick, quick preview on this video. Is everywhere you've got a stud, you've got a huge inefficiency in your wall. You've got a huge thermal bridge in your wall. On the build show today, I'm going to show you a brand new type of framing you have never seen before. Today's video is sponsored by T-Stud. Let's get going. Now, if you haven't seen this video, you got to check it out because basically what these guys have invented is an R20 stud. As you can see here, it kind of looks like a floor truss in a vertical section. And they've put closed cell spray foam in that cavity such that the thermal transfer is very, very minimal through the studs because you have so much airspace between the, the front and back. So they come in two by six and two by eight sizes. And this video just absolutely blew up from the minute I, I, um, I published it. And a little behind the scenes on this, about three weeks or a month after this uh, video was published, we were probably at, I don't know, half million views, something like that in three weeks. Uh, Brian, the inventor of the product, called me and said, Matt, I, I had no idea this video was going to get so many views. I am thoroughly overwhelmed. We're a small company. Uh, we don't have a ton of resources. We don't have a ton of these on the ground yet. And I've gotten um, calls and emails and sample requests, so many so that I honestly can't even dig out from being buried underneath them. So if you've contacted these guys on, on their behalf, they're not asking me to make this video. Give them some time, give them some patience. They're working with several people on doing some more mass market of this. So if you're interested in using T-Stud, probably weren't able to do that in 2019. My hope is that in 2020, at some point you will. And um, we'll make an announcement on this channel when they're more widely available, when manufacturing has really caught up and is able to pump some of these out. So I think these are very limited in terms of their availability in the US right now. But my hope is, that these guys are gonna be able to, uh, to really pump out some serious product because I was totally blown away by this and obviously you were as well. Okay, next video. This was one that, uh, that I sure didn't expect. I, uh, I started watching um, Matt Carricker's channel, Off the Ranch, because I saw his, his, uh, his other channel, which if you're not familiar is called Demolition Ranch. My boys and I have watched it for two or three years crazy channel and in my YouTube feed came up this video uh, I bought an abandoned mansion it was Matt's Matt's family basically bought this crazy terrible house that's both awesome and a mess all at the same time that that initial video got millions of views and of course Matt across his three channels has like 10 million uh, subscribers well a bunch of you got on and said hey Matt you got to contact Matt Reisinger about this about this house so at some point, I shot a message to Matt on Instagram and said, hey, Matt, you know, I'm, I'm just an hour away from you or so in Austin. Uh, if you want some tech help, I'd love to help you. And Matt shot me a message back on Instagram and said, yeah, I'd love it. And so I went down there and made this video with him. And, uh, and crazy enough, uh, Matt has done a crazy good job of taking this house apart and putting it back together in a thoughtful way. But here's just a couple minute clip of my first meeting of Matt and his family. Wow, <laughs> Bill, look at this place. Holy cow. What have these guys gotten themselves into? There they are. <laughs> what have they gotten themselves into? Indeed. Now, Matt's done a great job uh, of documenting his process. In fact, really a better job of me documenting my process on my remodel. But funny enough, about a month later or so, uh, I was ready to kick off my remodel project. And this video was my first one. I bought a crappy 1970s house. Now I've done a couple videos on it since, but I got held up a little bit in the permitting process and we've really just started in earnest now. So 2020 is gonna be the year that you're gonna really see a bunch of videos on my uh, 1970s remodel house. It's turned into a much bigger project than I originally envisioned and scoped for it. I originally thought this was gonna be a rental. I was gonna spend you know, maybe 50, 75,000 on it. It's now turned into a full blown whole house remodel the Reisinger way. We're gonna do it all the way, the right way. And I brought in my buddy, Steve Basic, an architect out of Massachusetts to help me with the building science details. So it's gonna be a fun project. Stay tuned for that. Before we close out this video though, let me run through just a couple of quick photos because I didn't get everything I wanted on video uh, in those kind of top nine for 2019. 
So here's nine images from the year as well. I did several videos with Tori from Mythbusters. Super, super cool guy. I really enjoyed meeting Tori. And getting up to the factory meeting Ted, as I mentioned, I was watching this old house when I was a 12 year old. I was also watching Ted Benson on this old house as an early teenager. And to get to build one of Ted's houses and finally meet him in person here this past August, he's a lifetime uh, hero of mine. And it was so fun to get to actually talk with him, see his operation and see how he builds houses in his factory. Also this year, you've heard me talk about it before, but buildshownetwork.com, that's been a dream come true for me. You know, this channel, I started this channel to educate, to mentor, to train, to encourage people to build better. And I'm only one person. There's only so much time in my day to make YouTube videos. And you know, I publish every Tuesday and every Friday. But with buildshownetwork.com, it's enabled me to get other like-minded builders, like Brent Hull, for instance, out of Fort Worth, to make videos on their job sites and teach and train as well. You know, when I was a young builder in my 30s, 15 years ago I started my company, I moved to Texas, and I met some incredible older builders, builders that were about 20 years older than me. I actually get to work with one of them today, a guy named Tim, uh, who's been a mentor and a friend for me for the last 15 years. But it's that relationship with those older, wiser builders for me that really honed my craft and enabled me to become the builder that I am today. As I'm approaching 50, I look back on my life and go, you know, I've learned so much. I still have so much more to learn. How can I give back? How can we teach and train that next generation of 20s and 30s and 40s builders and remodelers and architects? And Build Show Network is really how I'm doing that. So tune into Brent's channel. Incredible restorer, remodeler, renovation expert, historical and um, period houses. Really, really neat guy. I'm making a trip from, to uh, see him later this week, so stay tuned for some videos. We've also got some videos coming up with Matt Carricker at his renovation. Um, we're gonna be using Huber's Zip R sheeting on his house, so we're gonna be making a video about how to do that correctly in a renovation, and we're gonna be doing that on my remodel as well. Jake Bruton uh, in Columbia, Missouri, also on buildshownetwork.com. Super smart builder. He's been working with Steve Basic on a couple of really, really high performance houses that are built at a, uh, what I would consider a very reasonable budget point. Check out Jake's work. <laughs> Just a cool photo of Matt and I from the demo. And I wanna end with this. Uh, you know, my family means so much to me and I, I actually have probably traveled a little too much this year. I'm gonna probably slow down a little bit next year on the travel. But one of the trips that was most meaningful for me that I made a video on was my trip this year to the Dominican Republic. It's now my second time I've been able to take my family uh, overseas and see how the rest of the world lives and for them to realize gosh we live an incredibly rich lifestyle that's paid dividends in so many ways and if you're a family man like I am I would encourage you to take your family on a uh, trip overseas to really see how the rest of the world lives and to give back that's been so meaningful for me and let me close out this video with uh, with just a funny uh, ending here uh, you know I get so many comments on my videos, and, and please bear with me. I'm sorry that I cannot respond to all of them like I could five or six years ago. The channel has grown tremendously over the years. You know, we've, we've pretty much doubled every year the last two or three years. We're just over 500K this year, and it's crazy to think we could be at a million next year. And when it comes to comments, I always figure I get about 90% comments from people like you that are Build Show fans, that are interested in building better, and that if you have a comment um, in a negative way, you're gonna do it constructively. You're gonna comment in a way that says, hey, I disagree and here's why. But occasionally I get those comments from people that are just internet trolls. Uh, and I actually keep a funny file of some of them. But I appreciate you guys that are Build Show fans that have commented back <laughs> to some of those. And uh, I don't know this person, um, but I sure appreciated uh, Reggie's comment back. Uh, Reggie Jenkins, you absolutely cracked me up with this. This probably is my favorite all-time comment on my channel. Uh, I literally have laughed out loud multiple times over this since you published this last January 2019. Guys, thanks for all your support this year. It's been an incredible year. I've got to do some incredible things, meet some incredible people, and learn some significant lessons in building a better house. I got a ton of stuff planned for 2020, so stay tuned. And if you're not already a subscriber over at Build Show Network, subscribe to our newsletter. That comes out every Friday morning. 
And if you go to the newsletter sign up, you're just going to get one email a week from me. I'm going to tell you what's new on the site. But currently, as of today, one new video every single weekday is getting published from either myself, Jake, Brent, or Wade to that website. So there's a lot of really, really good content over there as well. But if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button here. YouTube's not going anywhere for me. This is my golden goose. Every Tuesday and every Friday, we have new episodes. Guys, follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.